Guys, welcome to a new technical exploration. Today we are facing an interesting challenge, a Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra that, according to our customer, has come into contact with liquids. Upon its release here in Spain, this device marked its market value with a price tag of around 1,300 euros, which could be compared in terms of value to a 15 years old car. Here's the first tip. We start with the crucial first step. Upon receiving a water damage device in our workshop, we immediately disconnect the battery connector to prevent additional internal damage, such as short circuits on the motherboard. Hello everyone, I'm Adriana and with the help of Leonardo, in today's video we are going to try to find a solution for this device. We proceed to disassemble the screws of the middle frame with an electric screwdriver which allows us direct access to the motherboard to look for signs of corrosion and humidity. Once in front of the motherboard we carefully disconnect each of the connectors and remove the board for inspection. This moment is crucial as it gives us the first complete view of the potential of water damage. The humidity indicator, which has changed from white to red, confirms contact with water. This label turns pink with slight exposure to liquids and red with the larger amount. We continue with the visual inspection at the bottom of the device. With an AMSCOP microscope in hand, we start a detailed visual inspection of the motherboard. This step is fundamental as every connector, integrate circuit and component is examined carefully for signs of corrosion or damage. Corrosion soon reveals itself, showing its first signs on some capacitors, where humidity seems to have deteriorated their properties. Faced with more corrosion, we adopt a meticulous approach to cleaning using a piece of cotton soaked in contact cleaner, a method I prefer for its effectiveness and gentleness compared to more invasive processes. A particular circuit draws our attention due to the notable accumulation of sulfate on its pads. Removing this corrosion becomes a tax of precision where every movement is calculated. This process is not just about technique but also patience as we clean each component with the care it would require as a work of art using tools like a surgical scalpel and antistatic brushes and when it's necessary resorting to the hot air station to remove and reposition the component. This work consists of taking small steps until we found the solution.
we encounter another area affected by humidity and employ the same cleaning method. Personally, I find this approach much more satisfying than using an ultrasonic cleaner. Moreover, the contact cleaner specifically designed for these purposes not only removes rust but also protects the electronic components with a protective layer of oil, surpassing the capabilities of isopropyl alcohol in this task. integrity of the component that raises dabs. For this, we use a laboratory multimeter with which we measure the impedance of the affected pad. The results are good and this procedure is extended to each component we suspect might have compromised its functionality due to the corrosion. This analysis requires not only technical knowledge but also sharp logical reasoning as it repairs is a unique challenge that is not always resolved with present formulas. In our job, you have to rely heavily on logic. You can't work like a robot. If someone uses a method, it doesn't mean we have to use it 100% in our workshop. You have to see it and draw our own conclusion. As we identify more areas affected by corrosion, we continue with our cleaning work, ensuring that each affected section is restored to its optimal state. Here's another important tip. In the presence of damaged components in critical areas like the CPU, memory or PMIC, it's essential to perform precise measurements to identify their nature. If it's a capacitor on a vital line, its removal might be crucial for the motherboard's operation. Then it is replaced with the new one and that's it. The primary goal is to recover the proper functioning of the motherboard. We encounter a component whose connection to the motherboard has been severely compromised. The decision is clear. Remove it and proceed with cleaning the area, preparing it for the following steps. It can be seen that one of the pads has lost connection with the motherboard.
With the motherboard reassembled, we moved on the testing stage, a critical moment in our diagnostic and repair process. Using a tester, we are going to make some measurements to see if the device is functional. When measuring the voltage at the battery connector, we observe a reading of 3.8 volts. However, the device still does not display any image on the screen, a common problem in devices that have suffered water damage, possibly due to the internal screen damage. An analysis with a USB tester shows a consumption of almost 1.7 amperes, a promising figure that suggests that, despite the challenges faced, we are on the right track. The next step is to communicate with the customer the budget for the new screen replacement, offering a significant discount on the cleaning process as part of our commitment to quality and customer satisfaction. This is how we work with high-end devices whose screen prices is quite high. Our final conclusion, I greatly appreciate your attention throughout the diagnostic and repair process. Guys, he is Leonardo and it will be a pleasure to meet you again in our next tutorial. Bye bye!